Hi, I'm Dana Schof, editor of Civil War Times Magazine. The last time we chatted, I was talking about how relieved I was to see cooler fall temperatures arriving. And now we're hard on the heels of Christmas. Uh, time has really flown by. And as the editor of Civil War Times Magazine, I'd be remiss if I didn't remind you that our magazine makes a great Christmas gift for those other Civil War buffs in your life. But today I want to talk about the Confederate soldier and our perception of the Confederate soldier. Recently I've seen and read in the news where the Confederate soldier, the rank and file soldier that fought for the Confederacy, has been described as a Nazi or a terrorist or as a very sword-wielding fighter for Christ himself. And I reject both those as extreme and unsubstantiated. And the reality is much more complex. I think we have to accept the fact that the Confederacy existed in large part primarily to further the institution of slavery. I think if we look at the secession ordinances of the various states, the Confederate constitutions, and the Constitution, and the reading and writing of Confederate politicians, their desire to keep and maintain slavery is very dominant. When it gets to the men in the ranks, it's a little more complex. If I was a young man, for example, in Tennessee in 1861, let's say, I undoubtedly would go off and fight for the Confederacy. I do that in part because I wanted to defend slavery and believed in the ideals of my new country. I'd been raised to accept slavery as a positive situation, and I would have had no problem defending it. I would also have gone off to fight to defend my family, as well as to support my friends that were enlisting at the same time. Furthermore, I think if you sat the typical Union soldier down with a typical Confederate soldier and had them discuss their racial views of African Americans, you would find them to be very similar. I think both men would have agreed that African Americans were an inferior group of people that needed white guidance to survive and flourish. The difference would have come that that Union soldier would believe in a free labor economy. The Confederate soldier would have had no problem with a slave labor economy. So, I think what we need to do with these Confederate soldiers is to accept these men as part and parcel of a very different America. I don't think if you had an ancestor that fought in the Confederate Army, you should be ashamed at all of that person's service. I think we don't need to lionize these men, nor do we need to villainize them. We need to accept them as who they were, again, as part and parcel of a very different country. We need to understand their role in making America what it is today. And I think on some level we also have to appreciate the sacrifice and the ordeal that they went through during those four difficult years of Civil War. So it's difficult to discuss this in a brief segment like uh, we have here, but I thought it was important to mention. So I wish all of you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I hope that you get whatever you want for the holidays, and I'll talk to you again in 2011. Thanks very much.